Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, I'll now hand over to you. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you've all had a, a, a lovely little break there. Uh, I managed to, to replenish some liquids and get a quick snack on board. So now I'm ready to do some crazy Construct 3. Um, first, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to take you back to the, the, the competition brief. Uh, now, I think it's really important now as we, as we move forward through some of my sessions, these are more about uh, games and creating games in Construct. But um, it's really important, like I said, that, that you, you look at the, the, the whole picture when it comes to game development. It's not just about coding. It's not just about the end product, the game. It's everything else that, that comes together. All of these things that are, are in the competition brief that actually make a game. Um, you know, that there, there's so much more than, than just that, that, end, that end result. You know, the, the, the number of people working behind the scenes that, 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 bring, that bring games together is phenomenal. Um, okay, so I just want now to um, go back to my PowerPoint, if I can. Uh, just let me stop sharing that. Um, right, okay, so what I'm going to do now is going to go straight into, um, into using... construct okay so the first thing i want to do though we uh, before, we, before we get that we need to get some files to uh, to, to run the game with so uh, you need to go onto the digital schoolhouse website uh, again you can do this anytime if you're watching this at a later time you can go on there the, these resources are all will, will be available um, for, for quite some time now i think uh, so once you're on the Digital Schoolhouse website, digitalschoolhouse.org.uk, quickly go onto the resources section uh, from the menus at the top and then resources again. Um, scroll down a little bit there. So the ingenious resources. And we just want to go into some workshop resources. So from the workshop resources, again, that first link there, the algorithms and programming resources. And there are lots and lots of uh, really, really good resources to help boost your computer science skills. Um, but the one that we are interested in today is the part baked games. So click on part baked games, um, scroll down. You should be able to recognize that construct page there and access all files here. OK, this takes us to a Google Drive. Uh, with all our files on. The file that you need is in the part baked games files. So just open that up. And then we are going to download the run the gauntlet part baked game. So if you right click on there and then just download that. Okay, it does a quick scan for viruses, um, it, just to check that it's safe for your computer, and then downloads it. Now that will put this file into your downloads folder. Obviously, you can then move that around to where you want it to go. Uh, when I downloaded this earlier, I put this into a, a different folder just so I know where it is. Um, okay, so we're just going to go back on to uh, Construct. Uh, back onto uh, construct.net and then launch now. Okay, we did a um, an update before when when we ran, so um, I don't think that there there will have been another one released since the last time we ran that. Um, so it just goes straight into the the window that we are used to. But we're not going to go into new project now. Uh, we're going to open a file and we're just going to open that file. Um, that we downloaded. Now, you may need to navigate using the sidebar on the left-hand side to your to wherever you've saved it to, to your downloads folder if you've left it in there. I've just got a part Bay Games Workshop folder, which where, is where I put it. So I'm just going to open up my file from there. Give that a few moments and we get our file open. Our page opens up. Okay, now you can see it looks exactly the same as it did before, but this time we have a few things in. Now, uh, there was a question from the, the, the first session. Somebody asked um, which programming language does uh, Construct uh, 3 use? So there's, there's two answers to that question. Um, initially, you, it uses its own 
block based programming language which is a cross between uh, the blocks that you might have used with Scratch or with Kodu, where uh, the text is pre-populated in there and you're literally snapping code together like a jigsaw. Um, and we have some text in there as well. So the, the, the it's kind of a cross between a text-based uh, programming language and a, uh, a block-based programming language, but you can uh, also um, program in Java in um, Construct 3. Uh, now Java is a really, really good program for developing web apps. Uh, you may have used it before in school, uh, you may not, but it, it, it's quite similar in the way it's, it's built to Python if you've used that. I know a lot of schools do use Python as the uh, text-based programming language of choice, uh, and it, it's quite similar in that it's, it's a high-level language, uh, which means that it, it's very similar to, to spoken English. So even if you're not a programmer, what that means is that you can, you can have a good go at understanding what the code means, what it's saying, because it looks like real English. Um, I hope that answers that question. Um, any other questions that you have, please do uh, pop them up and I will do my best to answer them for you. So, so um, Mark, just, just before you move on, just, uh, just a couple of people, um, just because you went through it quite fast, how to get to the run the gauntlet. Um, certainly, yeah. I, I was going to go through that again, but I can, I'll, I'll, I'll jump back in and, and do that, uh, how to get back to that. That would be brilliant. Thank you. No and, problem. And, what, and what we'll try and do is we'll try and put this underneath the YouTube video yeah. so everyone can uh, can get it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so from the Digital Schoolhouse website, digitalschoolhouse.org.uk, onto resources, and then resources again. Scroll down a little bit further, and we just want to look at the workshop resources. So click onto workshop resources. Uh, the workshop that we're focusing on is an algorithms and programming workshop. So we can just click on there. And from in this section, there are lots of different, now these are in alphabetical order, uh, luckily. Um, so we just need to scroll down to part eight games and uh, read more. And then it is just under the, um, the, I, the, uh, screenshot from Construct 3, a little bit more about what, what the, uh, the, the workshop entails, and we can access all the files. Okay, from the Google Drive, if we go to part bait game files, and then right click on run the gauntlet. Now, after you've done this workshop, and you're obviously going to be desperate to, uh, to, to do some more uh, coding and get more involved. There are a few more part bait games there. Okay, I'm going to tell you all what what, what a part bait game is in a moment, um, and hopefully that they'll uh, that they'll be useful for you moving forwards. Okay, so once you've done that, you can go back into construct. Um, if you are on the main construct page, launch now. It will open up, and then you can go to file and then find your part bait games and open up. Now I've already got a copy open up, so I'm just gonna cancel that. And I'm gonna close that window down because I've already got mine open up there. Okay, hopefully um, that, that's, that's helped you get those files ready. All right, now I know I did a little tour of um, the, the windows earlier, but I'm just gonna revisit a couple of things because now these are populated with things, they'll hopefully make a little bit more sense to you as to what's going on. Okay, so we have our properties window over on the left hand side. Now this looks at properties for each of the different assets within our game. Okay, I'm gonna go on to, on to layout one, which is our main game page. Now you can see this looks slightly different now because we have our game in there. Don't worry too much about what's going on here, but this is just where you put everything when you are building your game. Um, when you click on different things, different things get highlighted and you can see that actually things change in the properties. So we're looking at the properties for that particular asset that we've highlighted. OK, so in this particular instance there, we've highlighted the monster. Um, it has a it's very catchily named monster for us. So that's useful. And then we have the properties for the monster. OK, this particular Asset is called monkey ball. 
and then we have all the assets, all the properties, sorry, for the asset monkey ball. All right, you can click on things down this side as well. So for example, if I click on monster there, we get the same highlights there and then the same properties over here as well. Okay, the project will highlight every, what we call instance of that particular thing. So for example, if I click on monkey ball there, we can see that we have multiple instances, multiple copies of the monkey ball, because we want that to, to behave in the same way. We want that to do the same thing in our game. So we don't have to program every single time that's on screen. We just program it once. Um, and those all those instances will, will behave in exactly the same way, if that makes sense. That's just a nice little shortcut there for programming that we don't have to keep repeating the same code time and time again when we have when we have the same objects that we want to use, the same assets. We can program it once and literally copy and paste that. Okay, so. That's a little bit about that window. What we're going to do, we're going to look at a couple of, um, of the mechanics. So I'm just going to go back into my presentation. Okay, if you haven't done um, so far, as was mentioned earlier, the Menti code for this session has changed, 8005379. Make sure you do that. Okay, so part bait games. Okay, a part bait game is a partially finished game. Okay, so what this does, this allows us as developers to focus on one particular area of game development. Okay, games don't just go from being starting to be made to be finished complete games very quickly. Uh, the development cycle for a game can be two, three, four, five years long. OK, I would imagine that games like um, FIFA, even though they're released every year, it's the entire year that is spent focused on developing that game. FIFA 21 has just been released. I have no doubt in my mind that FIFA 22 is probably being looked at already. And as part of that, they will probably use sections of FIFA 21 to develop things a little bit further. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at a game that already exists to a certain extent, and we're gonna look at how we can develop that further so we can focus on one small area. Okay, um, what we're gonna be doing, uh, as I said earlier, we're gonna be using part bait games that allow us to focus on game mechanics. So we'll probably get a couple of game mechanics done this session. And then on Wednesday session, we'll look at finishing um, a, a simple game, by adding some further game mechanics to it. OK, one of the game mechanics that we want to look at is only moving forwards. As part of our game, we want our main character, the monster, to only be able to move forwards. OK, so what we're going to do, we're going to look at how we're going to add this mechanic in. Now, I'm going to go through this really quite slowly and I will come back and go through it again just to make sure that you've, you've, you've all got that and understood. Obviously, if you're watching this at a later time, you can rewind, fast forward the video um, to, to, to get to this point and uh, just go through this as many times as you need. So I'm just going to come back out of the PowerPoint and I'm going to go back in to our run the gauntlet. Okay, so what we want to happen uh, in our game, we want to be able to move this character, but we only want to go forward. Okay, so let's see what happens at the moment. What's been programmed so far? So if we click on the preview button, it then opens up our uh, preview window and you can see that actually the only thing that's been programmed at the moment in terms of movement is a little animation. So we have our monkey balls spinning and our monster character. Now, although he's not walking, he has got a walking animation. OK, so he's not actually moving. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put some movement into our monster. So we can close down our preview and we're going to add some movement into the monster. So from the project window, 
We're going to find the monster in our assets and click on it. OK, the next thing we need to do is to right click on that and we're going to add what's called a behavior. Behaviors are things that the, the, the doing things of our characters, as it says, the, the, the behaviors of our character. What is it our, our characters actually do? So we're going to add a behavior to make our character do something. So we click on edit behaviors. Now, at the moment, there are no behaviors for, for monster. OK, once we start adding behaviors, they will appear in this list. So we're going to add a new behavior. OK, now what we want to happen is we want our character to move in a particular way. Now, we want it to behave because this is a, a platform style game. So that's the kind of movement that we want. And there you can see it gives a little bit of a description of what's happening here. Jump and run along platforms. OK, and we're just going to add that. And you can see there now that the behavior has been added. OK, so let's now run the game and see what happens now. How has this gone any different? Ah, that's not gone how I wanted it to go. Our character, I don't know if you saw that straight away, just drops through the floor. OK, so we obviously need to look at character, look at uh, behaviours of other things as well as just our character. OK, so I'm just going to close that down. Right, I'm going to re-show that now, how we get that uh, behavior on. So we click on the monster, right-click monster, edit behavior. OK, imagine this wasn't here because I'm just going to show you how to re-put it in again. Add behavior, find the behavior that we want to add, in this case, platform, and click on add. And that adds our behavior into there. We can just then close that window down. So fairly straightforward to do that. Find what we want to add the behavior to, right click, edit the behavior and put it in the behavior that we want. OK, but as I said earlier, once when we ran this, um, if you're very quick, you'll be able to see it as it comes on there. It just falls through this, our platform, our our section that we want our character to walk along. So we need to add a behavior to our platform section as well. Now, the platform section is called wall. OK, so we do this in exactly the same way. Right click. Edit behaviors. Add a new behavior. Now, this time what we want to happen is we want to tell our wall. It's called wall, even though it's a it's a floor section. I know that's a little bit confusing. Um, we want that to be solid, which basically means, as it says there, it's it's a solid. Our our character won't fall through it. It will it will um, it will just go uh, beyond the surface. So add that. Okay, exactly the same. Click on what we want to add our behavior to. Right click, edit behavior, add the new behavior. In this case, it's solid now because we've already added that. That's why it's disappeared there. OK, and then we can just close that window down. Now we can um, run our game again and see what happens. OK, now that's looking a little bit better. It's not falling through. So now I can use my arrow keys to go backwards and forwards, to go left and right. I can even, because we set it up using uh, the platform controls, I can do a jump as well. OK, now at the moment, that's all we've set up. OK, nothing happens when we run into the monkey ball. It's literally just that one section that we focused on at the moment. So although the game itself doesn't work exactly how we want it to, at the moment, we have our one section that we've just focused on working reasonably well. OK, now our rule, our game mechanic that we want to put in is um, is to have it just going forward. So we need to add a little bit extra in now. We need to change this up slightly. 
Now, this is where we add an event. So we're going to add some coding now for our monster. OK, so again, I'll go through this nice and slowly and go through it a couple of times uh, because this is, this is getting a little bit more complicated now. All right, you'll notice here it says you have 23 events remaining. One of the things of uh, having a free account is that you only are allowed 25 events per project. So obviously, if you start creating things and realise that, you know, you're, you're going to run out, of, um, of, of events to use, that is when you'll need to think about registering an account. Okay, so at the moment though, we're just going to click on add event. Now, this event is going to be based on keyboard rules. Okay, so it's the keyboard that we want to use as part of our uh, movement. So although we are moving the monster, this is about the events are about what, what we actually use to do things. So in this case, we're using the keyboard. OK, and what we want to happen is when a key is down. No, I'm not sorry. No. When the key is down, sorry, not key code is down. When a key is down. Now you can. Uh, once you've clicked on the, the click to choose button, you can either press the key that you want or you can choose the key that you want. OK, so I'm just going to choose the right arrow key. So you click on the right arrow key and then OK. All right. So what we've set up there in terms of computer science, this is a selection statement. If something happens, we want that to do something. OK, so when our keyboard right key is pressed down, we want an action. We want to do something. So that's the next bit we need to add in. OK, now the action, this is what we are going to apply it to. So we want the monster to do something. OK, so we want the monster to do something. Now, this time we want to simulate control. OK, we want it to move in a particular manner. Now, there are lots and lots of things here, as you can see. OK, um, if you once when you are initially using the program, if you know what action you want, but you can't find it, we have got a handy little search button here. So I know I want to use the simulate control, but I'm not sure where it is in the list. So to save me having to look through it all, I can just start typing, typing it in there and it will appear here. OK, so that's the one I want. Simulate control. And what we want to do, we want it to move right. OK, that is done. So our selection statement is now complete. So when the keyboard right arrow is down, so it's, it's pressed, the monster will simulate moving right. It will move right, that means, basically. OK, what I'm going to do, I am going to uh, delete that and we'll go through that process again, because that's quite a lot to take in, I think. OK, so add event. Now, the event, this is what we want to use to make something happen. So in this case, we want to use the keyboard to make something happen. And we want to, when a key is pressed, something to happen. So keyboard, keys down and then we choose which key. So you click click in the, the click to choose window, and then we can press the key that we want, the right arrow key. Okay, and then that is our first section done. So when the keyboard right arrow key is down, we can now add the action in. The action is the, the asset, the, the game thing that we want something to perform. So we want the monster to perform this. Click on next. And again, this is where I can do my uh, search. So I can just type in, start typing in simulate, simulate control next. And we want it to be the right. OK. All right. That's done. But we still have one more thing to do to get it to work properly. What we need to do now, we need to look at the properties section, OK, in the behaviours. 
So if I go back onto layout one, I now click on my monster to get the monster's behaviors. If I scroll down to all the behaviors, what I want to do is disable the default controls. The default controls are the, the, the keys that we set up. So up, down, left, right. If I leave that on and run this, okay, our code that we've just created, our selection um, piece of code will still work. But also because I have the default control still selected, I can still do all the other things as well. Now we only want to move forward here. That's the only thing we want to do. Okay, so that is why we need to take out default controls. Okay, so when our monster is highlighted, we will then get the properties and behaviors for that, for that asset. So we scroll down to the behaviors and remove the default controls. Now, when I test, okay, although you can't tell it, I am pressing my back arrow, I am pressing my up arrow, and I am pressing my down arrow, nothing's happening. That's exactly what we want. We don't want anything to happen. We only want to move forward. So I can now move forward, but I can't move back, I can't move down, and I can't move up. Okay, so what we've done there, we have, um, just let me come back into the PowerPoint. Okay, we have done this. We have added the mechanic to only move forward. Okay, that's quite a, a, a simple one to add. I know there were quite a few steps in there, but as you start to use construct, more you'll find that these things are actually quite similar in terms of how you set them up they've all got this, uh, a very similar sort of um, process involved in terms of setting things up um, and so that you, you will get quicker at doing that you'll be able to do that a lot better okay so we've, we've done that we, we've, we've set up our character so we can only move forward Okay, the next thing we're going to set up is a bounce off walls rule. Okay, now you may have noticed our monkey balls, they weren't really doing very much. They weren't making life very difficult for our monster in terms of getting to the other side of the screen as its goal because they weren't bouncing up and down. Okay, so we're going to use the, uh, the, the monkey ball to get that to bounce off our walls. Okay, so I am... Um, just going to go back into our run the gauntlet. Okay, now this process is exactly the same. Okay. We're going to click on our monkey ball. In fact, no, we're going to click on it from here because then they all get selected. Sorry, yeah. If you if you do just click where you have where you have more than one item, more than one asset on. If you want them all to be to behave the same, you have to click on them from project to select them all. Otherwise, as I did there, it just selects one and it will only be that one that has the code altered on it. OK, so from there, all our monkey balls are now highlighted and it's exactly the same kind of thing that we do. OK, right click. Edit behavior add new behavior. Now this particular one, what we want to do, we want to add something called the bullet behavior. Okay, now bullet behavior is a movement that it, it, um, it basically means it moves like a bullet, just in, in a straight line. Um, that, that's all that means. I think they could have potentially used a, a little better um, wording on that one because it's not it's not a bullet we're not creating bullets it's just a, a method of movement so think of it in terms of like, like how a bullet moves so it's um, it just moves when, when a bullet is fired from a gun it just goes in a straight line so it's just that's that that's the movement that we're, we're, we're putting in there it's just a, a straight line movement okay and Again, we can test that at this stage to make sure that that works. And oh, now 
again, I think we've got a very similar problem that we had with our monster is that we need to look at other things as well that are going to affect that movement. It's literally, they've done exactly what we asked there. They've moved in a straight line. Okay. They've just, what they haven't done is, is stopped. Okay. They've just gone uh, as a straight line and stopped. All right. So before we, we move on, I'll just show you again how we get to that point. So monkey ball, click on it in the project window to highlight all your monkey balls. Right, cl right click, edit behaviors. Again, imagine that one's not there. Add new behavior and bullet in this case. Remembering that bullet doesn't mean that it's treated like a bullet, like it's going to cause damage. This is just in terms of movement. So it's going to move like a bullet, okay? One direction. Okay, so that is what we get do to get to that stage. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at the behaviors in properties to bounce off solids. Okay, remember earlier we set up our wall to be a solid. Okay, uh, in the behaviors, exactly the same as we did with the monster and we're just done with our monkey ball. So we had that set up as a, so, as a solid. So we want it now to bounce off solid. So click on the, the, the monkey ball asset in project, and then we should get its properties appearing here. Okay, now at the moment, the default for that is for it not to bounce off solids. Okay, we put a tick in the bounce off solids and we should now see a big difference. And there we go. Okay, we've already had, because this is a part bait game, this is a part complete game. There are various things in there that may or may not work. That's our job to go and discover those. But at the moment, so we have our monster, we've set up so we can only move forward. But at the moment, nothing happens when we hit these. We can see we've got a, a health bar here. So I'm thinking maybe that's our next session, looking at a health bar. What happens when we run out of health? Okay, and we've managed to get to the end quite easily at the moment, and we get a you win. Okay, so that bit's already set up for us. It's partially set up. We just got to get it working properly. So at the moment, now once I'm there, the game just carries on and I can't actually move anywhere. Okay, or I can move off the screen. All right, but that's it. All right, so there's still quite a lot to do with our game, still quite a few bits and pieces that we need to add in. But I understand that that was quite a lot to do there to, to, uh, to get those things working. So I just want to spend the last five minutes or so just going out back over a couple of things just to make sure that everybody is OK with that. And then I will spend uh, the, the, the last few minutes of the session. If anybody has any questions, um, I can answer those. OK, so in your project window, we have our assets. When we click on our assets, we can then edit their behaviors. OK, the behaviors, as it suggests, how, how, the, how the asset behaves in the game, how it plays in the game. So we've set up a couple of different behaviors so far. We have a bullet behavior, which sets up our um, assets to move in a straight line. OK, some other behaviors that we've used, we've used the solid behavior to set it so nothing falls through it. It's treated like a, a solid, not like a liquid. So for example, if that was water, we might want it. So it, the, our, our asset does sink in, but this is a solid. So we want it to be able to walk on top of it. Okay, another asset that we set up was platform. Uh, sorry, another, another behavior, sorry, that we set up was platform. Okay, to allow our character to move as though it were in a platform style game. So jump left, right. Once we'd set up our behaviors, we then tweaked things slightly 
to get them to work exactly how we wanted to. We set the properties of our behaviors. So, for example, with our monkey ball, we looked at some of the properties to get it so it bounced off solids. So it didn't just go through. OK, and for our monster, one thing that we did with the properties, we removed the default controls because we only wanted it to move in one particular direction. With our wall, we didn't really, we didn't change any properties, but we did add in the behavior to make it a solid. Okay, so lots that we've done there already that you could go away with for the rest of today and have a practice around with. Have a look at what you can do with those. Okay, one good thing about this is that you can't go wrong. You can't break it. Obviously, you could put behaviors in that don't work, but as long as you haven't hit that save button, you can always go back. Worst case scenario, you can always go back to the Digital Schoolhouse website and download the original. OK, when you start making things, obviously, one thing that you uh, are going to, 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 to want to have a play around with is, the, is how things react in different ways. So playing around with those um, different properties is a really useful way to, to, to get used to, to knowing what, what things do what in um, in construct. In terms of the wider picture again, if we go back and have a look at our competition brief, now this could quite easily be a, a client brief from somebody that's come to ask you to create a game. You can then look at how those um, those behaviors and those interactions could be uh, could be done based on what you've been asked to do. Okay, like like I said earlier, a lot of a lot of games development is at this side of things, the, the planning stages, the looking at what our story is. A lot of the things you might have to go and figure out whether constructs can do it. Constructs may not be the right tool to solve your particular problem. There are lots and lots of different game engines out there that can do lots and lots of different things. Construct is very good, for example, if you want a, a 2D retro looking type of game. If you wanted to create a game that used 3D graphics, um, then Construct might not be the game engine for you. OK, so as well as just being able to create the game from the story, another job that you need to have in terms of games development is to decide what are the best tools for that job. How are you going to choose what the the, the, the tool, the, the games development engine that, that will create your game, that will tell your story? Um, okay, so what we're going to do, um, on Wednesday, we have a few more sections to put in. We've got a few more um, mechanics that we need to do to get our game looking perfectly. Uh, what I would like you to do is to have a little play around, okay? Have a play around with your Run the Gauntlet so far. See what else you can do. What can you do? What do, do? what do different behaviors do? What do different changes to your game make? Okay, you might start with one particular idea. Now, without knowing too much about this game, you've probably figured out that the idea is to get from one side of the screen to the other without getting hit. What other things could you add in there? What extra issues could you present for the monster what other things could you do to make life easier for the monster okay so there's plenty of scope for you to have a think about um, this game the direction that it goes obviously i'm not going to be able to cover every eventuality that you guys think of um, and there are a few things that i want to do to get this particular version of the game working <coughs> excuse me um, but i do think it's important that you know you, you you're able to, to think and play and test um, your version of the game because at the end of the day you're going to be leaving these sessions hopefully enthused and being able to, to create your own games okay so for this session 
that is it from me. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, session three on a Wednesday, we're, like I say, we're going to continue. And then for session four, we're going to look again at some of the, the things that are behind the scenes a little bit in terms of um, making sure that our, our game prototypes look quite good and what we need to do to, to prototype a game. Brilliant. Thank you once again, Mark. That was really, really interesting. And I'm sure that many of the participants and, and everyone watching at home um, is going to go off and start trying their own Construct 3 games. Um, and yeah, I'm going to really ask all of you to uh, try your best. Try and um, in the next hour or this afternoon or whenever you've got time, just try stuff out and uh, see whether it works. And you can always watch this video back if you need to. It will be on our website just in case you get stuck. OK, so hopefully and we'll see you all again on Wednesday for the next session uh, to use Construct 3 and about prototyping with Mark. Um, but for also, I hope a lot of you uh, come up um, this afternoon, in about half an hour, we're going to have a session on school to success. So looking at the skills that you're learning today and the skills that you've learned um, over the past few years at school and hopefully that you're going to learn in the future and how they all sort of tie in with each other. Um, and yeah, so I'll see you back here in about half an hour. All right. Have a nice break. <laughs>